This is a movie about life and art, and art and life combining is called magic. It's Oscar week, the time when fallen movie mogul Harvey Weinstein used to loom large over Hollywood. Well, today he made a very different kind of appearance. Someone put up a gold Weinstein statue. Carrying a full-size grown male in your arms up Hollywood Boulevard. I don't want to drop him. The worst thing is my sweatpants are falling down. When I first came to LA, I was amazed by the amount of street art out there. You go around the Melrose District or downtown or the Arts District, and the place is absolutely flooded with, with murals and, and graffiti and tags and paste-ups and, and stuff like that. I got into street art about five years ago, almost by accident. I'd always been impressed and uh, a fan of Banksy and Black Lorat and, and Shepard Fairey. And I was looking for a new way to convey messages, to convey news and my commentary on culture. I was a photojournalist for over 20 years and that's where my pieces come from. I, I, I kind of don't really consider myself as an artist. I consider myself still as a photojournalist, but my medium's changed. My pieces are always reactive, it's something, whether it's culture, news, or society, that's very kind of of the moment. You know, I want my pieces to shine a spotlight on so people ask questions of the piece, people consider their own ideas, people consider the politics of the issue even. I know some of his politics, and it's like, uh, he's, he's very anti-gun, and uh, I, I seriously resent a Brit coming here to, to make his living, to make his bones, and the first thing he does is, one, he shits on the country, and two, he wants to change it. If I moved to England, I would enjoy the tea and crumpets, and I'd keep my fucking mouth shut. When I first came here, I noticed people driving around in their cars with these little plastic Jesus figures. Clearly, there's a lot of very religious people here in LA. And I just thought, well, if you're that religious, do you really need like a $5 two-inch figure in your car to remind you of what Jesus looks like? That is kind of rather ironic. So I kind of thought, yeah, use that. You know, it's interesting because my art falls into a number of characters. There's, there's a social commentary, and there's art that sells through galleries, and there's these street installations. And the first piece I did, which was a, a heroin-injected Oscar, I was a bit concerned about that because it was the first piece, it was pretty controversial just after the death of Philip Seymour Hoffman. But the feedback I got through emails and text messages and so on was 100% positive. Everybody was totally behind it. He kills it with his, his statues. I think he really hits the mark every single time. I think it's really well thought out. I think it's really well executed. Um, and I, I appreciate them. For the last few weeks, I've had media contact me and people that follow my work contact me saying, hey, what are you doing for the Oscars this year? There's an expectation now that I was a little bit concerned that the ideas I, I was having uh, or I had weren't strong enough. And then the whole Harvey Weinstein thing, you know, broke. Bombshell allegations tonight against mega producer Harvey Weinstein as the New York Times uncovers what they say is a 30 year pattern of sexual harassment. Harvey Weinstein is this almost larger than life character in Hollywood. He is a global icon in, in the industry. I just want to thank my agent, Kevin Uvain, and God, Harvey Weinstein. This piece actually came about with a conversation with Ginger, a brilliant sculptor. He did my Kanye West piece last year. He also sculpted the naked Donald Trump um, pieces for In Decliner a few years back as well. So we had this conversation about doing him in a number of ways. When I did the Trump statues, everybody wanted to take a selfie with it. So I wanted an art piece that was designed as a selfie piece. I got the idea of this with the casting couch and the second time he heard it, I think he was a little more receptive. He actually sat there silently for a second. He's like, brilliant, let's do it. Interactive pieces are awesome. I think it's um, in the day and age right now where everyone wants to share art through Instagram. I think 
why not? Why not give people a platform to interact and, and have fun with something? Um, even if it is a, a really heavy um, conversation or topic, I think that it is, you know, it is important because then it, it definitely prompts you, right? Like you want to talk about it because you're involved in it. We decided that the best way to do this, this was working with Ginger, and he's got so much experience in casting figures that he said the best way to do it would be to actually cast on, on a person, a real person, rather than mould it from scratch. So we actually got a friend of mine who, like, like Harvey, was quite broad across the shoulders. Since they won't know it's me, it'll be like an in-joke too. Uh, and it'll also be a preview of what I'd look like if I were to gain a bunch of weight. <laughs> and uh, decide to become as repugnant a human being as I can be. <laughs> Can we go on this? Yeah, yeah, you just wash the nose. And then you gotta do a couple different layers. Doing okay? All right. He was breathing through two holes for the whole time under his, his nostrils here. Matt is so patient, sitting here, playing dead. Terrific. He's a little quicker. Now look what I'm doing. I'm, I'm uh, smashing it in and making it pick up all the detail and everything. Making it flush to the surface. A little bit superstitious. You know, if it's being a pain in the ass the whole time, I worry that the whole project's not going to be smooth. This, I think, is an indication as to certain things that are going our way because it's meant to happen. So what do you think? Love it. Came out great. Exactly what we needed to do. That was the starting point. And then Ginger went away and he made the belly larger and then completely reconfigured the face to, instead of looking like my friend Matt, it now looks like Harvey. So I had to drive up to Vegas yesterday, hoping to pick uh, Harvey up in the late afternoon. And when he came out, I was still working. So he was crashed in a hotel room for a little bit. I tried to sleep and couldn't, so I... Uh, went and picked it up about three o'clock in the morning. And then when he finally woke up, he drove to my house and I was passed out. So I had them sitting in the back of my minivan. So he had to uh, grab Harvey Weinstein's torso and head and arms and hands and, you know, then take the uh, severed cadaver back to Los Angeles. So once it was ready, I headed straight back to LA with it on a six hour, six hour drive. So. Yeah, I, I went up there and I came back with a, basically a bag of body parts, a head and chest and arms and some hands, basically. And that has got to be made into a statue in a day. Where was it? Oh, shit. That was it, wasn't it? Yeah. A bit short on time as we're going to put this out tomorrow. If I got more time, I would have fiberglass everything. But at the moment, this is just a temporary install. So plenty of duct tape, construction glue, and so on. Hopefully it will hold together. Can we peel all this off or back enough to... That's going to be a fucking mess, isn't it? Oh. There's a 24-hour news cycle, and every reporter wants a story. Now, if the Oscars are going on, it's okay, who's going to win best Oscar, whatever, that's one story. But if you can create a story that a, a reporter can piggyback off of, then, and if it's a good one, your, your, your piece can go viral. Conservative street artist Sabo has hijacked three billboards in Hollywood to attack the entertainment industry for allegedly shielding pedophiles, a move that is reminiscent of three billboards outside Ebbing, Missouri, which is up for seven Academy Awards.
When I look at the Sabo piece, I thought it's a great idea. It's tarts over billboards. As artists, it doesn't matter which side of the political divide we come from. If we can use the Oscars and other high profile events, that's great, whether it's you know, his stuff or my stuff. What I did was very street, highly illegal, very fucking risky. I've been up on one of those billboards. It's fucking scary at night time. It's cold, it's windy, it's fucking dangerous. By the time we got to the second billboard, it was like 4.30 in the morning. And we went to lift that billboard up, and it was upside down. And I was crushed, dude. I was cold. It was a wet cold. It was late. I was tired. I was like about to call it quits, and they're like, no, let's keep going. All right, let's keep going. We took it down, rolled it back up, packaged it, heaved it back up there, put it, went to lift it up, upside down a second time. And I was like, this isn't going to happen. But you know, my guys, they wanted to keep going. I said, fuck it, let's go. I take my hat off to him for, for getting up there and doing that, but I mean, look better if they were tight and stretched properly. By the time we were done, we were pretty damn happy. I suppose on a competitive point of view, I'd be a bit pissed if he got more publicity than I did. But it's not happened yet, so hopefully he'll raise his game and I'll raise my game. It doesn't really matter what you do. If you've got an art show, you've got a piece, almost doesn't matter whether you start preparing it three months or six months before. The day before your show's happening, you're still driving around with the car windows open, okay. so pieces dry in the back. It's, it's just the way art, artists are, I guess, you know? Some people love that pressure. I, I, I hate it. I put an email out last night to various media organizations saying that uh, this is the fifth year I've done one of these and it's going out, and I got absolutely zero replies. You know, there's nothing you can do, so we can stick it out there and hope for the best. Is that? No. I want to laugh when I see Plastic Jesus because he got his face covered. And it's like, I have to think the reason he wears that is because he's a Brit and uh, he might get deported or something. I don't know. I said, dude, you put a fucking sculpture on a, on a sidewalk. Trust me, no one cares. No one's You're not going to get arrested. Yeah, I think it works. It's called casting couch for obvious reasons. You know, if you are sitting here, in this case, on a casting couch next to Harvey Weinstein, I want people to ask themselves, how does it feel? How does it feel knowing what you know? It's kind of shocking to see that it's a statue of him. What do you think of it? <laughs> so difficult to talk about this. Young women, they get abused so bad because they, they want to follow their dreams and just got taken advantage out of them and so never ever fuck somebody just to be on TV like somewhere. Don't. You can do it on the Yeah. Computer. Casting couch is by far the best, most dialed piece that I've seen him put out. Starts conversation and revisits issues that people constantly forget and just get swept under the rug. Under the red carpet rug. <laughs> the day the casting couch went out was a little weird for me because just like the Trump statues, I wasn't there. I was back in Las Vegas doing my day job and getting the text messages and seeing the photos and then getting to see the articles popping up online. I think it was such a first read that it just didn't do anything for me. And um, technically with the whole sculpture thing and stuff, you know, there's obviously some merit to that. Uh, I probably would have pushed it a little further. It is a concern when you do something that's controversial and there's been victims. I'm getting a certain amount of notoriety through this piece of media attention from something which is extremely horrific. Girls have been abused, women have been abused and raped. And I don't want to be seen to jump on, be jumping on the bandwagon just for the sake of getting fame or notoriety or something like that. He opened the door to the room in an open robe. It was tied, but, you know, open at the top. Um, like I could see his chest and his stomach. You know, when there's anything Harvey related, I get, you know, a bunch of texts, emails, and uh, a friend of mine who lives in LA had sent me a photo of it, and I was uh, pretty blown away. I think I was, I just laughed and was like, this is fucking awesome. <laughs> People need to laugh. I think people need to laugh, especially when we're constantly being traumatized and going through these hardships. Laughter is what helps us to heal and helps us to overcome these situations. There is a line of, you know, are we making a joke about this or are we giving more fuel to the fire? 
And I think in this, it's more fuel to the fire. I thought it would definitely piss a lot of people off, but I think that's kind of the point of art is, you know, to have people, um, to make people feel something, reaction. Like poor Matt Damon. I'm not a fan of fucking Matt Damon, but uh, he, he made a comment like, Hey, you know, they're not all the same. Some of them are just cads. Others are rapists. You can't, like, judge them on the same level. He got trounced. And, for, and then he went and apologized for saying it. I think a lot of people on the left, they're very likely to become a part of the witch hunt. Thank God that we're just putting these people on blast and, and that we are the next step closer to not having to live our lives in fear everyday life is like being hit on, being sexually harassed. Like, it sucks that like we have to go through that every day, every damn day. I don't think it's ever gonna change it, but what will make a difference is that people are aware of it now. I think our society is coming to a point where people know that it's going on. People talk about it. People aren't afraid to say something. And I think that's the difference from now as opposed to a couple of years ago even. People, you know, even when it happened to me with Harvey, I didn't, um, I told, you know, my immediate friends and family, but it's not like I was gonna go to CNN or to the police. You know, I didn't really know what I could say or who I could tell. And I feel like there's so much awareness now, there's, um, outlets for people to go to. There's different platforms that uh, people could speak out on. If it throws greater spotlight on the subject of sexual abuse and sexual harassment within Hollywood, and even the ex excesses of power within Hollywood, if it can in some way contribute to uh, a, a catalyst which makes Hollywood a better place to live, work, and aspire to, to be in, then, then great, then it's a success. I feel like the whole thing is still just gaining momentum and it's growing. And I think the more, you know, um, things like, like this documentary and these art pieces, any, anything like that, the more that it happens, the better, because it's just continuing the conversation and it's keeping it going. I'm hoping that one day they come to me and say, hey, blessed Jesus, here's $50,000 to do one or two things, either create an official Oscar statue for us, put it on Hollywood Boulevard, or take the $50,000 and fuck off out of Hollywood for a month. We don't want you here. I love working with Plastic Jesus. I love the message that the Oscar piece has put out. So if he wants to collaborate with me, we're going to do another 10 years worth until we help to clean up the plague that is this city. When will you start thinking about your next Oscars piece? I'm already thinking about it. <laughs> <laughs>